Hello everyone and a happy new year to you. I can't believe that we're back in another lockdown again. 2021 was supposed to be that year that everything got back to normal, but here we are again. This year though, we have got the brilliant app Seesaw that we're gonna be using for sharing home learning. Now Seesaw, as those of you that have downloaded it will gather, is a great way for us to share your children's learning while they're at school. Um, but during the time that they're actually learning from home, it's a brilliant opportunity for our staff to be able to share video lessons that's pre-recorded or live lessons um, actually teaching your children the next steps in their learning rather than just revising stuff they've done already. We want to keep them learning and we know that that's what you want as well um, and this is the best way for us to do it. So I, I want to show you some of the things that you might not be getting at the moment on Seesaw. Um, I know in speaking to a few parents some of you are a bit confused about how it works so I've downloaded the Seesaw for Class app and the Seesaw Family app. You need them both. Um, your children will have the Seesaw for Class app and you yourselves will have the Seesaw Parents and Carers app or Seesaw for Family app. So I'm going to show you how it works in this short video demonstration. Um, as always though, if you've got any questions or comments or anything that you're struggling with, please get in touch with us and we will do our best to help you. I hope this video is helpful and I really do hope that this year is good for you. So you'll see that we've got the two apps downloaded. We've got Seesaw Class and Seesaw Family. Now Class is the one that the children will be using, or if it's a younger child um, that you need to use it for them, then have it on a device that they can also use. And I'll show you why in a wee while. And I'm thinking especially for nursery and primary one. Seesaw Family is the app that you'll have on your device. But we'll start off with the Seesaw Class app. So I have set up a demo page and our student here is Harry Potter. And if I go through his journal, we'll see that a teacher has posted three achievements and one piece of home learning. So the time when he got into Gryffindor, when Hedwig brought his first letter, when he won the golden egg and his homework. But as time goes on and you get lots and lots of posts on here and you'll already start to see loads of posts from your teacher, you'll find that it gets quite distracting and trying to flick through all of these things to see where the latest learning is. Now, in my class app, I can see that I've got my name on the right hand side and I've got a little folder icon. If I click on that folder, I can see all of the different folders and the teachers in Moss Park are using folders to put all of the learning for each day. So for example, the first folder will probably be one Monday, the 11th of January, 2021. And that's the one where all of your Monday work will be. So if I click on homework week one, you'll see that only the homework post has been put in there. And if I want to change that, you'll see that the folder is now red because that was the color of the homework folder that I chose. I can go to achievements. I can see all of my achievements. In other words, a different day's learning. Um, some of the classes have actually used these to post things like Christmas posts, that sort of thing. And if I want to go back to see everything, I click on the folder again, clear selection, and I can see absolutely everything. Now, important thing to note, I can only see my posts or things that the teachers have put for me. I can't see posts from other children in the school or class. And that is the same for your children. So please encourage them to post their work. They don't have to be embarrassed or shy because the other children in the class are not going to see it unless they actually show it to the other children using their device. Some of the teachers are not just posting activities to the journal, though. You'll see that um, just underneath where it says Seesaw Demo, it says Journal Activities and Inbox. If I go to Activities, the teacher might have posted some activities in here. And again, that can be put into folders. You've got the folder icon. I've not set any up for Harry Potter, but it works the same as the journal. And finally, you've got inbox. That's where if the teacher sends a message to individual students, they'll come up in the messages. And over in notifications, this is where you'll see everything that's been added and what people have said. Um, it'll highlight if there's a new activity in the notifications. If I want to sign out, say I've got multiple um, children using one device, which will happen. Obviously, we've not got loads of devices. And if you've got more than one child at home, this can get a bit tricky. But any child can sign out of their device. They click on their name in the top left hand corner and then go to sign out. I'm not going to do that just now. 
It is important, therefore, to keep a copy of the code that you use to log in, especially if you've got more than one child, if they're not just using the one device, um, so that the children can just scan it as they go. And if you need that code, just get in touch and we'll send it to you. If um, your child wants to add a piece of work, for example, if, if the teacher said um, write a short story about something and they want to take a photo of that short story and upload it, or if they just want to type the short story directly into Seesaw, they just go up to the Add button and they get the option to add a photo. Now that takes you to the device's camera to take a photo directly. A drawing, if and this is especially good for our younger children, if one of the tasks is to draw a picture, say in the nursery, or to write some different letters, they can use that drawing feature and do that themselves and post it themselves. Video, again, takes you to the inbuilt camera. Upload, you can upload photos from your device, you can upload um, PDFs that you've saved, you can upload videos that you've saved. If you click on note, then that's where you can type free. And if you've got a link of something to share, say your task is to make a blog page or something like that, then you can add that as a link. So all of this is here. I'm just going to show you drawing just now. And um, all of them kind of work in the same way, but they're self-explanatory as you go through. If I go to drawing, you'll see that I get this blank canvas. Now I can draw freely on it. Um, I can use the different tools at the bottom. So I've got pencil, pen, highlighter, um, I don't know what this one is. Oh, weird glowy felt tip. That's kind of cool, actually. And the eraser that I can rub out whatever I've done. I'm just going to undo those actions to make it a bit quicker. You can also type if you want. It's a free flow thing. I, I wouldn't use this to type a full story because it's not as good as notes for that. Um, you can add a little voice recording. I can't do it just now because my iPad's connected through um, this recording software, so it would mess it up. But if you click the second one down underneath text, um, you actually just draw to it. This one here, that's the recording button. If you want to add a photo to this, so if say you're taking a photo of your work but you want to highlight different things that you've done that you're proud of, go there and you can add other things. A link to this, a background, different shapes, loads to do. It's not just restricted to one page though. Up in the top right hand corner below the tick, Sorry, my iPad's doing something weird on the screen. Um, below the tick, you've got this little page here. I can add more pages and then it becomes like a slideshow that you can flick through and your teacher can flick through. And you'll see quite a few of our teachers have done that sort of thing where you can flick through different things in one post rather than having it all underneath each other. Once you've finished, you just click the tick and that's it done. It goes straight onto your journal. You'll see once it's uploaded, it says waiting for teacher approval. Now, this is a safety feature because if we take um, a photo of something that's for multiple students, obviously the children will be able to see the comments that are written underneath that from whoever it was tagged to. So this is to make sure that children don't post anything mean or offensive and equally for parents that um, we're not abusing Seesaw and the communication tools on. So every single post will have to be approved by a teacher. Um, so you can rest assured that your children won't be able to post inappropriate things on here. So that's really it for the Seesaw Class app. There's not much else to it. You can play around with some of the other features. So if I go back onto the Family app this time, it is a different layout. Um, this is the first time I've logged in on Family here, sorry. So you'll see I've already connected to my child, um, which is Harry Potter in this case. That's pretty awesome to say Harry Potter is my child. Um, but you can add more than one child to this. So if, say, for example, you've got three children in the school and one in the nursery, then you can have all of them on this. You can have as many children on this um, as possible. Well, I, obviously, there's a limit there. Um, but you just click on the Add Child's Journal and it will take you to that scan the QR code um, provided by your teacher or insert the, the um, code that's given. We can actually connect you remotely. So if um, you've lost those sheets, I can connect a family journal via your email. So if you just drop me an email, I'll get that done. If you're watching and your child's in a different school, please do not um, email me for that email your child's teacher. So we've got the ability to have multiple children on the one account, which is one of the huge things about Seesaw. But you'll notice one of the things you can't do is upload work. Um, sorry, I've just clicked on journals there. You can't upload work to this. You can only view 
make comments and like different work. So I could comment on this to say, well done, Harry. I could even leave a voice comment if I wanted instead of typing, because I know some people don't like typing. That's absolutely fine. You can leave a voice comment. If you click the three dots, you can share or save it as well. You can keep um, photos on your device of your child learning, which makes it really quite nice. It means that you get that wee bit more inside the classroom. And you can print a QR code of any post as well, so that you can share that with friends or family. But you can again see everything um, that your child can see. So the home view here, if you had multiple childs, will show them all on the one page. If you want to just see one of your children and the work that they're doing specifically, if you go into journals, you've got the option there to add another child's journal. Or you can go up to your child's name. You can see the class that they're assigned to, so my one's in Seesaw Demo. If they were in multiple classes, for example, they were in high school, then you'd be able to see all of the different classes and navigate through that way. If you click on Seesaw Demo, um, you can see all of their posts as we did before, but it will only have that child's posts. Now, if you want to see the folders, so for example, if you wanted to see what the work was for Monday, you can do exactly what the child does, but instead of clicking on their name, you go up to where it says Filter All Folders, Click on that and you can choose the folder that you want to go and see. So if I go into homework, then it's just the homework folder. If I go back up, I can go into achievements. It's all of the achievements. If I want to clear that, I just press the X in the top right hand corner and it shows everything for that child again. And your inbox in the top right hand side, any messages from your child's teacher will appear in this part. Um, you can only message your child's teacher if that feature has been enabled or if they've messaged you first. Um, and again, we would ask that you don't abuse that system. Just it, it, use your school's normal lines of communication is the most effective way. And any notifications that have come through about your child's activity will appear in there. And that is really it, that's the Seesaw Family app. So we've got the two different apps. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Hopefully it shows you how you can use Seesaw more effectively at home, how your children can view Seesaw, how they can upload things. It's a much simpler app than anything we've used before. And I really hope that once you start using it, um, you see just how effective it is and just how good it is. As always though, any questions, please do just give us a shout, um, phone the school, email myself or your class teacher, um, get in touch and we will do our best to help you. But please take care, stay safe and be in touch if you need anything. Bye bye.